Hey guys, I'm Pete Sekula. Uh, a few years ago I did a video on uh, spreading plaster inside Substance Painter here and um, never got around to doing a tutorial on it until today. Uh, obviously a few things have changed about Substance Painter since I made this video so I had to go back and kind of reconstruct the effect um, but you'll be able to achieve uh, the same results with uh, what I'll send you today. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, drag some materials in. Um, first one I'm going to do is a um, uh, my brick horizontal material. Um, and uh, by the way, these materials that I'm going to be using, uh, you should be able to find them in the link in the description below. Um, this brick horizontal you can actually find on Substance Share. And let me get my base plaster real quick. It's off screen. Uh, there we go. Okay, so make sure both of these are set to base material and we'll import them in. Add a fill and we'll drag this brick horizontal into the material slot here and it should come up. Cool. Um, this uh, material was authored um, without a displacement output. So uh, I like to turn on parallax mapping when I'm doing a lot of height map. Uh, variation and stuff so uh, let's do that right now in the texture set settings let's add a displacement map okay and uh, let's name that layer brick and to get the height map into that displacement um, channel uh, maybe we can just do this displacement and we'll do height I think that should work. And in our shader settings window, enable parallax closure mapping. Let's just crank up the samples and the strength. Cool. Okay. So now the height is in the height channel and the displacement, but um, this uses the full range of the height. And since we're going to be layering things, I'm just going to cut that in half. Right, so I'm going to add a layers and take the height and we're just going to bring that in. Let me see if that affects the displacement any. No, didn't think so. Okay, so we need to do that again on the displacement side. Okay. Maybe I'll bring that in a little bit more. Cool, okay. So now our bricks are kind of, you know, thinner than they were. And that leaves room for the plaster that we're going to slather all over the top. Uh, to do that, let's add a folder. Plaster. Make sure we name it correctly. And we'll add a fill. And we'll drag that base plaster into the material. Now you can use any material you want. It could be carpet. It doesn't matter. Um, just have a material. Um... And so we're going to need to do a little bit of fixing here. Let's see. Um, oh, uh, since we're putting this material on top of another, we're not blending them. We need to do some adjustments. Uh, let's go to the normal channel, and for the plaster folder, we'll just set that to normal. And for the height, instead of add, we're going to do max because we want them to return the higher of the two values, right? So if you look at the height map, it now looks like this, where the tops of our plaster are protruding through the bricks. So if we went down to the height levels adjustment, you can see the bricks will show through by adjust those levels. So let's bring that back down to like 50% there. Okay. And so, I think we're ready to start working here. Um, what the the wall breakage kind of material filter requires is another texture to kind of drive um, where that plaster is going to exist. Um, normally, you know, you would use a layer mask or something and start painting it in, but what the filter does is it, it'll take the layer and manipulate it do blurring, make it nice and thick and break it apart and warp it and spit it back out into alpha masks of all the channels and basically a layer mask isn't going to cut it for this effect. Um, 
So we need to go to the texture set and we're gonna add a user zero and just change the depth to L8 and because we don't need to be fancy. And now we're set. So let's do that. Oh, one other thing we should probably do, just good practice, is just to add a fill layer of default values, right? And for user zero, let's just make that black. So we don't have any transparency on any channel so we can see what's happening, right? So here's our user zero. There's nothing on it. Go back to the plaster layer and I'm gonna add a paint adjustment to it. And all we're gonna do is just kind of paint with a brush here. Um, whatever, just give me a give me a soft brush. And I'm just going to make sure everything's turned off because we're only going to paint on user zero. Uh, set it to white and I'll just go like that. Get rid of that. <laughs> I want that back. Whatever. It's goofing on me. Okay. Nice strip of plaster right there. So nothing's happening yet because we didn't add the filter. But let's do that now. Add filter and find the wall break. Um, filter that is in the description. So we'll just drag the wall break and set that as a filter. And import it in. And let's just put it in. And there we go. So now we have, take a close look here. So we have the strip of plaster and it's got a nice kind of like broken kind of fall off. Um, it's nice and thick, but you can see where the two materials made up, the transition is kind of busted, right? So we have a slope, the bricks are showing through and suddenly it goes right in, straight to the bottom of the wall, then comes back out again. So that's, you know, we gotta fix that. And that's why we have parallax enabled so we can see those things. Um, it's easier to see it in parallax than with that 16-bit uh, red and green view. Uh, so let's fix that up. Um, all we gotta do is add uh, levels adjustments to the height and the displacement for the plaster. So above wall break, uh, we'll take the height and I'm just going to drag that shadow slider all the way down. And I'll do the same thing with displacement. And now we're all set, right? That's all you got to do. Things are a lot better situated now. So let's take a close look and see what this wall break thing is doing. Um, if we look close, you can see that there's kind of like this kind of chipping terracing effect. Uh, underneath the side here, and that's controlled by cuts A, cuts B. Um, there's two kind of uh, sets of terracing going on here, and A and B are reference to that. So we can change the amount. You know, you can have, just have three cuts, so it's just three layers. Um, typically, you know, four and five, pretty good. Um, yeah, just so we can see that there's like some breakage happening. That's cool. Um, slope amount A is, uh, well, the slope amount has to do with the grade of the breakage, right? So if I set these to zero, they're going to be vertical faces, you know. And, you know, you might want that, but typically it doesn't look good with parallax mapping because you get the stretching. Um, so a little bit of slope helps, you know. Uh, cuts balance, uh, kind of gives you a bias towards more visibility to cut A and cut B. So if I go all the way to the left, I think we would see one cut more than the other, right? Or it has probably has to do with the kind of sloping degree. Not quite sure. <laughs> I forget. Uh, warps are just a series of warps that kind of help break apart any kind of linear shape you draw on that user zero channel, right? We can get rid of all these and you should have something that's only mildly broken up right 
because there's some warping that's happening inside the material filter. Um, so, you know, we can turn that on. Angle, obviously, that kind of helps you vary it up a little bit. Edge darkening, this kind of helps accentuate the damage uh, and kind of show it off in the base color. So if I crank it up, you can see what's happening. All right, usually, you know, 15 to 20% is sufficient enough to uh, not break your PBR value range. Let's see. Um, let me bring that cuts balance a little bit. I think that's fine. Whatever's. Oh, we should do more. There we go. That's what I wanted. Um, usually, if you can't get the sloping you want, just give it a few extra cuts, and it'll give you some more steps. Okay. Um, what else can we do with this? Well, let's just go back to the paint layer and mess with that user zero layer, because that's what's controlling everything. And um, what if we just smudge, right? If I just pull that down, we can paint the height, right? We can paint that breakage and all the work's kind of being done for us. That's pretty cool. Um, if you paint with a finer brush, you can get some pretty cool effects. Like, um, where was that? I go with like this fibers brush. I'll scale it up, make sure the color is white. And if I pull down, maybe if I go a little bit smaller. Yeah, you can kind of get like a kind of a drippiness effect there. Kind of weird. Um, dots, I think, might be interesting too. Yeah, it, just experiment with the brushes and you'll probably get some really crazy effects. Get some like just spotty slopping happening. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. What's also cool is it's a layered effect, right? So if we go, say, with my hard brush and I paint like half the value in, you know, I could shave off just a layer of that stuff and create my own layers. You know? So I can go, I might need to fix this brick a little bit. That brick height might need to come down more. I'll drop that the brick height all the way down there and so I can just have a little bit of extrusion. There we go. And I'll probably have to do something similar with displacement. Come on. You know what? No. I'm just gonna bring that in there. Adjust these guys a little bit more so that they blend a little bit better. That still doesn't look right. There we go. We'll just do that. Uh, where was I? Yeah. So doing my own layers is pretty cool. Obviously, this works great if you have a pressure-sensitive Wacom, which is what I should have been using in the first place. So size and pressure. And let's set that to black. And if I just kind of gently paint, I'm creating some kind of cool stuff. I press hard and create a hole in the wall. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely mess with the brush options here. So if I bring the size down, uh, jitter to the size, jitter to flow, and certainly do the position, I can kind of make it more random. So it creates pretty cool holes. Um, this whole filter takes that one channel. That's what you've been painting. And manipulates the normal map, the height map, the displacement map. Um, does all the warping. Um, even does some AO. Um, the only problem is with this filter is the AO isn't going to be super duper accurate. 
so we have to add that in. Let's add a ambient occlusion channel and make sure we enable that stuff um, in our materials. That's good. Wall break, AO is enabled. And um, there's some AO that's going to be applied. But the downside is, is that it's not going to be multiplied over the underlying layer just because of how things work. Um, and right now you can see my underlying brick AO is showing through on the plaster AO. And you know, just like the normal map, we gotta go to the ambient occlusion up here and instead of multiply, if we do normal, we'll have something more accurate, right? Because again, this is sitting on top of the brick. Um, so now we should be a little bit more accurate. So that's basically it, guys. Um, have fun with this. Uh, just be very careful about you know how you're adjusting your displacements and your heights and um, you know keep messing around with the brushes you can get some pretty interesting effects so have fun with it